Hey everyone, it's Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the Amazon FBA and e-commerce podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to launch on Amazon without rebates and giveaways. We're also going to learn about how to set up these product launches in 2022, how much time and money is required, and also some common mistakes that Amazon sellers have when they launch a product. All right, welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the Amazon FBA and e-commerce podcast. Okay, like I said, today we got a great topic. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to launch on Amazon without rebates and giveaways. This is something everybody is talking about, especially since uh, Amazon put out that email a couple of months back. So yes, is it doable? 100%. Our guest today is a serial entrepreneur who quit, who quit his day job in 2004 to do content and affiliate marketing. He jumped into e-commerce in around 2012 when he purchased treadmill.com and developed it into a seven-figure e-commerce property. Since then, our guest has purchased a solid, multi, has sold multiple e-commerce brands and has a very popular blog and podcast called Ecom Crew. And yes, I'm talking about Michael Jackness. Can't wait to talk to him. Anyways, let's have a word from our sponsor and we'll come back with Boy Wonder. As you know, at Lunch with Norm, bigger is always better. Bigger business, bigger profits, and yes, bigger lunches. Z wants to make sure that your business and profits are bigger by taking you and your business international. They are a one-stop importer of record shop, including compliance and logistics services. They focus on all the elements involved in a smooth, first-time custom clearance so that you can focus on what you're good at, selling. Click on the screen now or follow the link in the description box below and get 50% off your first shipment today. All right. So where is Squire? I'm here. Hello. hello Happy hello. Monday. Happy uh, how, Monday. How are you feeling, Norm? Are you doing, are you doing good? Doing all right. I think it's the first time I rolled out of bed since the weekend. So I got uh, a, I got up about five minutes ago just to let you know. Okay, so Norm's not feeling the greatest, but um, yeah, we'll we'll continue to push on, push through. Uh, we really do appreciate it, Norm. Um, yeah, and, and I apologize if I cough into the mic. I'm going to hit uh, my no my mouse is on. No, my cursor is on. <laughs> I, I can try to put my mouse up there. It's not going to fit, but cursor is on mute. All right. And so if you're new to the Lunch with Norm podcast, we start off by smashing those like buttons, giving us those thumbs up and yeah, subscribing to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Um, if you want to be a part of our Facebook uh, community, our Beard Nation, as we like to call it, you can go over to Lunch with Norm, uh, the Amazon FBA and e-commerce podcast. Uh, it's a great place to ask your questions. Um, we do polls, surveys. Um, if you want to just interact with uh, the other community members, um, it's a great place to be. And I just want to shout out our community members right now. We have Rad, uh, Justin, who's already entering his hashtag view of Kelsey, <laughs> Nathan, Claudia, good to see you all, fellow Canadian, uh, Ionitz, and Andy. It's great to see everyone. Happy Monday. And uh, yeah, we can just jump into today's episode. Um, Did you yeah. know what? That beardo is an official word. Is it really? Yeah, I saw that on the weekend. I got to oh. catch up on some reading. Oh, okay, okay, like our lingo. Yeah, the, the beard beardo yeah. is an actual word. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, okay. Is I I know already I'm gonna mess up terribly today, but um, first thing, let's get you out of here, and we can start this thing. Uh, as you wish. Okay. <laughs> All right. So if you do have any questions or comments, throw them over into the comment area. So let's sit back. Uh, you'll probably have a couple of laughs on this one because uh, I already know I'm going to screw up. But sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy the show. Welcome, Michael. How's it going? I, I can screw up for you as well to make it make you look better if, if that helps. You know what? If you want to do that, if you want to take that part of this, that that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my so, best. Okay, very good. So my, you know what? Like I, 
I, I've heard of you for you know quite some time, but we only got to meet just about a week ago. Yeah, it was uh, one of these like weird things. I was walking down the hall and a mutual friend, uh, Erez, was like, "Hey, you got to meet Norm. Have you met Norm?" I'm like, "I'm I'm on his podcast next week," and and there we were shaking each other's hand. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was that was funny, and that, that again. Fun. That's why I love going out to these events and networking, yeah. you know, things because you, you not only do you met meet new people, but people you know virtually. So, uh, anyways, it was really good to meet you. Absolutely, now, being back in person again was was awesome. It was uh, wasn't two, it two years too long? Yep. Yeah, it was great. Um, so, just in case I didn't cover something, was there anything I missed? I'm sure there's tons I missed, but in the bio. So, who is Michael Jackness? And let us know if I missed anything. No, I think you got it. I mean, I? Uh, we, we're pretty public figures. We talk about just about everything we do on Ecom Crew. Uh, I've been doing it for almost 500 episodes and millions of downloads. But I'm still surprised that so many people never hear about it. I was, uh, I, I always do this thing in the beginning of my talks, and, and I forgot to do it because it's been so long uh, when I was speaking at Prosper. But I usually ask people like to raise their hand, like who's heard of Ecom Crew, uh, and like you know, five or 10 people in a room of 200 will raise their hand. And I try to point out uh, how difficult marketing is. And when you think you've been doing it forever and, and you've worked really hard at it, there's still lots and lots of people to reach, no matter what it is that you're, you're selling or marketing. And so uh, keep that in mind next time you think you've, you've hit a dead end and, and, uh, or, or that you've reached everybody that you think that you can, because there's still, there's still more out there to do. That always shocks me. Like, yeah, at Prosper, you know, you'd be walking down and, you'd have somebody pop up and, you know, try to grab your attention is somebody from the, uh, the convention center at the trade show. And, uh, you know, they'll ask you if you sell on Amazon and, uh, then they'll ask you, you know, what do you do or something like this? And you, you think, you know, um, like there's enough people that know in this small group of Amazon sellers, you know, who people are. And it always shocks me that, you know, that, Wow, it's only a small percentage, really small percentage. Yeah. This this inside group of people that know who you are, and there's this huge amount. Of, so, you know, if you want to take that and you want to put that into your brand, like you know, okay, I sell soap, but maybe one percent of one percent of one percent might know the name of my soap. Yep. You know, it's crazy. So exactly. it's all about marketing. Exactly right. All right, so let's get down to the down and dirty because. Uh, your topic, everybody is talking about. And by the way, if you're listening and if you know people who are launching right now, get them to listen because this is the show that you're going to want to hear. And that is, you know, how to launch. What do we do without rebates anymore? Okay. And that's the first question. So, you know, people were using um, uh, rebates and giveaways in the past. Uh, what's changed? Well, I mean, Amazon at least publicly has said that you can't do these shenanigans anymore. Right. Uh, we all know that what that really means is that people behind the scenes right now are scrambling for new shenanigans that they can do. Uh, Cause a lot of the community will be jumping from black hat or trendy thing of the day from black hat to trendy thing of the day. This is always going to be something that exists uh, in any subculture in any type of business where there's money to be made uh, like this. Uh, you know, we actually took a different turn, uh, not this time, you know, when, when this happened this time, but the last big shakeup uh, years ago. And you know, oh, November 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is something we've been talking about for quite a while. Yeah. Um, but what ends up happening, I think, over your career is eventually you get smacked by by Big Brother at some point if you're in a digital marketing space. And so for me, that came from Google back in like Panda and Penguin. You, you mm. mentioned I quit my job back in 2004. Uh, I've been at this for a while and I've had some bad things happen. And when you're, when you're doing the black hat thing, you know, first it starts, it's, it starts out uh, by, oh, I'm just going to get one link. You know, I'm just going to go to one link farm or I'm just going to do, you know, I'm just going to do one rebate or, or whatever it might be. And it works. And then you want to go do more and that works and you want to go do more. Uh, and so in our case with, when we were doing the, the Google stuff, it was certainly that way. You know, we were affiliate marketers, content marketers, and, uh, we would continue to push the envelope to get more links because more backlinks in general translates to, to, to better rankings. Mm -hmm. uh, until one day I woke up and we had no rankings and it's, it's this very binary, uh, you know, calculation where either you're it's, it's working immensely well, or it's 
not working at all. And in the affiliate marketing industry, and with that, when we were doing that, that type of thing, yeah, it sucked and it hurt. We went from doing hundreds of thousands of dollars a month uh, in profit to, to nothing, like to literally nothing. Um, but all the money we had made up to that point was in the bank and we had no inventory to, to deal with. And so when we got into this Amazon game back in, in 2015, uh, even though I was kind of pushing the envelope because I was doing that whole, like you give products away in exchange for a review, as long as the person like said it, it was all okay. But the day that Amazon came out and said, you can't do this anymore. It, it was very reminiscent to me of, of these Google days I'm talking about. And we've been as squeaky clean as we possibly can be since then and had to reinvent and innovate in ways to, uh, to combat people who, who are going to continue to do the, the no, no stuff, which is frustrating when you're uh, the, the one guy in the room uh, trying to play by the rules and everyone else isn't, it, it is difficult, but you know, I, my philosophy is a, you know, we're not in a financial position to like have our Amazon accounts shut down because not only do we not have all the money from Amazon that they owe us right now, <laughs> but we, they also have hundreds of thousands of dollars of our inventory. Plus we have hundreds of thousands of dollars of more inventory in a three PL that we just wouldn't be able to sell if our accounts get shut down. We, we also have, uh, you know, 27 employees that work for us that, that depend on us, which is a little bit different than, than before. And so, you know, we've, nothing's perfect and nothing's guaranteed by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I hear horrible stories all the time of people having their accounts shut down, um, you know, re regardless if they're playing by the rules or not, but you know, I want to put the odds in my favor that this isn't going to happen. And so that's why the strategies I'm going to talk about today were kind of developed. It was out of, out of that headspace. You know, it's funny because I hear all sorts of these tactics and you're right. As soon as one kind of goes away, there's another one, somebody else talking about something else that's getting great results. But yep. it's always, at least for the most part, um, short-term gain. And you're a marketer. I've come, my background is marketing. So if, and it's not sexy, but if people just did marketing, proper marketing, yep. they'd probably go a lot farther than any rebate. It might be slower, but at the end of the day, you'd have a more loyal, higher retaining um, customer base. And you're probably got a higher perceived value because you, you're doing everything right. Exactly. But everybody here is about these, you know, trending things. And I've been lured in. Um, now, if Amazon's listing, I'm, this is a hypothetical thing. <laughs> if, if I use rebates and I yeah. did see results, I'm all, again, it's hypothetical, but you know, it's, it's hard not to do it again and again and again, because you are seeing those first page results, but now, uh, you know, you're cut off at the knees and there's people scrambling because that's the only thing that they were doing. Exactly right. Yep. So now I want to get start talking a little bit about strategy. So what are you doing now? Well, for us, it's all about building assets away from Amazon. Um, and that, when you first hear that, that makes it sound like, well, we're trying to like sell on our own stores or just cut Amazon out of the picture in some way. And, and that is not, not the case. It's, it's building an asset away from Amazon to help support the Amazon business. Um, of course, we like to have some sales if we can off Amazon just to diversify a little bit. You know, it's always nice to know, you know, when, when you go lay down your, your head on the pillow at night, uh, that there might be some other way out that, you know, if, if, if there was the, the tragedy of your account gets shut down or your main listing gets shut down. Now that's something we have had happen many times, pretty much uh, every year. Uh, some, at least one ASIN uh, gets shut down a quarter. It feels like um, right. it's just something you have to kind of learn to live with. And so can you survive these storms? <clears throat> but you know, I, I look at, at Amazon as a channel. It is our largest channel and I want to support that channel uh, and gain an unfair position that uh, in a white hat way, you know, the things, the hard work that that other people aren't willing to put in or haven't uh, put in yet. Uh, and, and so what that really comes down to is building what would be considered like an affiliate website uh, away from Amazon in your space. And some niches or spaces work better for this than others. I mean, there are things that we sell that we didn't really think of this philosophy beforehand, where it's kind of difficult to, to do this. I mean, a, a great example of this is we have a brand that 
that sells stuffed animals. And so it's, are we going to go create a mommy blog uh, and, and try to capture people in searches that, that get people into a stuffed animal um, at the time that they're looking for, it? you know, probably not. It's, it's, it's pretty difficult. Um, but we also sell tactical gear and we own tactical.com. And so like, writing lots of articles about, about that, uh, and getting people on your email list and, uh, and having multiple products to sell them, uh, and, and pushing that traffic over to Amazon, that, that strategy works quite well. Um, we were also in the coloring space, a business that we sold in 2019, uh, where we did this and it, it worked incredibly well. We have a business in the home hardware space that this works incredibly well for, you know, you teach people how to, uh, you know, how to hang drywall or something. Uh, people are looking for this type of thing all the time. Uh, and we just uh, launched a, a brand or we're working on launching a brand in the knitting space, which is another whole story for another day about how, how well that's been received by the, the uh, knitting Twitter community. Uh, not the way that we thought, but that's <laughs> another whole story. But we think that the strategy works uh, pretty well uh, there as well. He caught me in the middle of a sip. Sorry. <laughs> all right. This all sounds great. So creating that blog and I understand that completely what you're talking about, but like the tactical side, the knitting side, and I can just imagine, you know, uh, the, the people who are giving you a little bit of harassment there, but, <laughs> um, any, anyway, is there any other types of strategies that you're doing outside of the blog? Well, it's, it's really comes down to, to two things. I mean, the blog is, is almost in people's lives, almost as short lived as a tweet, right? They're, they're searching for something. They land on a page, either you answer their question or you didn't. If you answer their question, you might have a chance that they click through to your link and, and go buy something, but they're gone. Right. And so what we really, the real optimization that we're trying to do uh, on our sites is to get people on our email list, um, because then you can communicate with them over a longer period of time. You can also pixel them uh, when they're on your page and, and serve them up Facebook ads uh, further down the line. Uh, this obviously the calculation for this has obviously shifted over the last few months with uh, the, the iOS update and right. everyone I know that's running Facebook ads now is struggling mightily, but I, I still see value in having them pixeled and being able to at least run remarketing ads to people who have been on your pages or looked at some of the things that you're, that you're selling. And so, but, but the, the main thing that we look for uh, is to get people on our email list. I mean, that's really where our bread and butter is. I mean, we're trying to, to recreate something similar to what we had with color it, where we had tens of thousands of people on our email list. And anytime that we sent out an email, um, when we're launching a product, it was, you know, we, we would just get a big bag of popcorn and watch it shoot right up to that number one new bestseller thing where you get that orange badge. And it's, it says that you're a new bestseller in the category, uh, even if it's a hyper competitive category, because we had so many people on our list. Um, in fact, we had so many people on our list that we would drip it out. You know, we wouldn't send everybody over there at the same time. We would try to stagger it over uh, like a week or two period just to to try to spread sales out and, and make it look consistent. But again, this is all completely white hat. We would send people over there, no coupons, you know, full price sales, um, because we had you know built a, a good following, you know, brand brand loyalist, and um, and they wanted on your products, and so and and we would send them to Amazon, even though we had the product available to sell on our own Shopify store. We would come up with a story of like, the inventory is not in our warehouse yet. Amazon has it. If you want it right away, go buy it on Amazon. If you uh, want to buy it directly from us, which some people would want to do, uh, it'll be available in a few days. And so we would actually, you have that strategy of, of thinking more about the Amazon uh, equation than anything. Uh, and, and sorry to continue to, to ramble on here. I know you're throwing no, this right in, so I'll, I'll, I'll mention something else that's important. But the, the thought process is, I think, short-sighted. Every time you get a sale on your own website, yeah, you're not paying that 15% commission to Amazon. Yes, you're getting their email address or knowing more about your customer, which is really valuable. I'm not going to argue against that. But it's one less sale that you have on Amazon, which is a flywheel type platform. And so all the marketing you're doing to get people on your website is kind of like throwing a a large pebble into the ocean and hoping to, to make a difference. Uh, you know, there's the number one place that people start their product searches now is on Amazon. And so having your brand have a presence there and rank there to me is more important. And these are customers that are never going to find your brand otherwise um, because they're searching there. And so if they're searching for uh, tactical gloves or ice pack for ankle or uh, bear stuffed animal or whatever it might be, the types of things that we sell, uh, 
it, they're going to buy something probably that day or very shortly around there. Uh, and if, if uh, you don't rank there, they'll, they'll never see them again. So to me, it's important as well to keep the Amazon equation at the top of your head and not be, not be short-sighted. Yeah. I like what you're saying. A lot of people, a lot of people that I've talked to, you know, they, they hear, Oh, I'm going to have a Shopify store or I'm going to go over here and create this, whatever. Um, they miss out on that, that they forget that the more you, traffic that you're giving over or the more you're converting over on Amazon, the better it's going to be for you. And it's the largest search platform in the world for product. Like yeah. why, why are you going to give that up? And what you're doing with that other layer. And I've got, I got a question about this in a second, yeah. but you're, you're capturing the email. So now if you do have a product uh, launch, or if you're doing something over at Amazon, you could let the people know. And you, like you said, just drip feed it and, and get those sales. I mean, that's an excellent strategy that a lot of people miss out on. So here's the question. Your added value, when somebody, it's tough now to, to get somebody to give you an email, you know, their email. What are you doing to get that? It's typically some type of lead magnet. Um, and if you go over to, to tactical right now, unfortunately it's broken. Uh, we have some type of tech issue. We're trying to get it fixed right now. Um, but usually some sort of lead magnet or free plus shipping offer. We're usually a B testing this, uh, to death, trying to figure out exactly the highest number of people we can get converting. And it's usually about 2% of traffic, uh, will convert to your email list. Um, and so we, we have developed a couple of products specifically for this. I think that, uh, that's also an important factor if you can. Um, and so for us, that, that product is like this little wallet multi-tool, you know, like one of these credit card size tools that fits, fits in your wallet, um, costs us like a buck to make. We sell it for about 10 bucks, makes a great free plus shipping offer. So you can have something on the site that says, Hey, get this tool for free. Thanks for visiting. Get this tool for free. Just pay the shipping and handling. It's a great way to get people uh, on your list. Uh, we have another product that we uh, are, are doing that with as well, a, a flashlight. Um, the other thing we can do is on particular pages, we have specific pieces of content that are kind of geared towards a particular bucket. And so, you know, if they're in a prepping on a prepping article, uh, the article might be about, about that. If they're on a, uh, you know, a different type of article, it'll be different. Uh, very similar to what we do on Ecom crew. I mean, like if they were on an article about, about importing, you know, we'll, we'll have some type of mini course for free about, uh, about importing from, from China. If there are uh, an article about Amazon, uh, we'll have something about, you know, the 10, 10 tips and tricks or something for, for Amazon. It, you know, I mean, you want to try to tailor the content the best that you can, uh, uh, or, or the, the, the offer that you have on the page, the best that you can, uh, and try to get to that point where I think the best you're going to really ever do is in the 2% range. Uh, you know, three, three percent is kind of the outlier on the upside. It can't happen. Uh, if you're at one percent on the bottom side, you can probably do better um, and, and convert more people to get to get on your list. And then the, the other key is like once they're on your list, the tendency is to just be like, "Hey, here's a coupon, or here's some new product I have, or me, 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 me." Go, you know, to talk about. Let's talk about me and my products. One of the things that helps us be really successful with this is that we very rarely do that, and so the bulk of what we send out is meant to be helpful to. Uh, to the end user. And so we try to hit them up with a lot of tips and tricks and other uh, things that they care about that they want to read. You kind of train them to want to be reading your emails. And then at some point, uh, you know, down the line, then you, then you can get them to, uh, to, to buy something. And so we, we always start with that strategy first. I went to, um, it was a, a, a small <clears throat> gathering in Toronto with Gower Chaudhry, and he was showing how to build a, a profile just build up your profile with simple emails that it's not just uh, sh saying promo 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 if it, if it's if it's a dog or if it's pets what type of pet if it's a dog what type of dog or, or small medium uh, large and he just kind of built it right out so you have all this information and then you can take it and separate it into different lists and now you can you know, you, you're more focused on exactly who you're targeting. You'll know your audience even that much better. Mm -hmm. And there's, we've talked about this a lot on the podcast, but uh, Rand Fishkin's uh, Spark Toro, um, you know, getting to understand your audience so you can just target them a little bit more specifically. Uh, I do want to talk about your blogs in a second, uh, your blog articles and, you know, how how big they are and, and, and how often you publish. But uh, before we do that, if you are using any techniques or if you're marketing, 
outside of uh, rebates and, and giveaways, what are you doing? Um, be interested to hear what you're doing right now. The other thing is um, we've got a great wheel of Kelsey today. Uh, Mike, why don't you tell us about uh, your incredible gift? Uh, the, uh, the, the free pr uh, premium membership we're giving away today. Right. Yeah. So I'm not sure how you guys are going to do it. I'll leave that in your hands or who you're going to pick. But uh, right before coming on, uh, I was asked if we had a gift that we wanted to give away today. And so on Ecom Crew, we have a premium community of a few hundred members uh, where you get unlimited email support from Dave and myself, two monthly webinars, one's like open Q&A where you can ask any questions you want. The other is our secret sauce webinar. Um, we also have seven pre-done courses, Facebook group and all that. Uh, we charge $2,000 a year for that. And we're going to give away a free membership today. So, um, yeah, that's so awesome. I, yeah, that, that, like, that's uh, fantastic. You got to use the hashtag wheel of Kelsey. It looks like in the comments. It Here looks like, yeah. <laughs> hashtag wheel of Kelsey tag two people. You get an extra entry and you know, we, we talk a lot about just Amazon, Amazon courses, Amazon, this Amazon, that this is completely different than what we normally talk about. Take advantage of it. Uh, Kelsey, you're going to do a wheel of Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get that. So uh, anyways, that would be fantastic. Uh, but before we get to my questions, how about another word from the sponsor? A big thank you to our sponsor, Startup Club, the largest club on Clubhouse with over 790,000 members and growing. They're one of the world's largest communities supporting the startup ecosystem from founders to those wishing to work for a startup and everything in between. You can find them at www.startup dot club for blogs recordings and a calendar of upcoming shows and on the clubhouse app just search startup club for daily shows 24 7 you can also now listen to their show the serial entrepreneur club podcast on apple and spotify too stop by to connect learn and grow together all right so now let's talk uh, about your blog again. What type of blogs, how long uh, do the blogs have to be? What quality do they have to be uh, to get them published? Yeah, so I mean, we're writing everything ourselves. We have a team of people internally that that do all this. So the, the first thing that we do that I always tell people is you got to be playing in the league that you're that you should be in at this point. You don't get to go right to Major League Baseball. You got to start out at, at T-ball as a kid right and so we we talk about going after low competition keywords first we use a tool like you mentioned Rand fishkin you know something like moz that he mm -hmm. that he has uh we use aras there's also a uh, sam rush they all do basically the same thing looking for that low competition score the other thing you just mentioned is what does the quality need to be and so what we tell our writers is the bar basically is you need to write the best article that's ever been written about this subject in the history of the internet um, which is a high bar in some, in some cases it's higher than others, but really what we're trying to, to focus on is it has to be insanely high quality content. Uh, another way that I always explain this to our writers is the real bar really is what it comes down to is when someone searches for a question on Google and they hit back after they've read your article, because they need to go look at the next article to get their answer, you failed. If they don't hit back, you succeeded. And this is one of the things that Google uses uh, in their you know, new uh, algorithm updates that they've made over the last few years that makes it much more difficult to kind of cheat because they, what, at the end of the day, uh, you know, they know exactly what your browsing history is. And so if you type in uh, you know, how to build a, a tarp shelter, for instance, uh, and you go to the first result and click back and then go to the second result to get that answer and then click back and then click on the third result, well, they're going to assume that the first two things didn't answer that question. And if the third thing is where you stopped, they'll assume that that's the one that answered the question. If that behavior happens over and over again on that particular search, your third rank thing will eventually go to second, regardless of how many backlinks and other things you have, that, that really helps significantly. They also look at things like how much time you spend on the page and how much uh, if you're scrolling down and, and things of this nature. So we look at all of those triggers and try to incorporate that into our articles to write an article that a answers the questions that people are asking that helps keep them on the page that hopefully gets them clicking another link somewhere on the page to then end up somewhere else and, 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 and stick on the site long enough that it gives them a higher chance of converting on our email list. 
And so those are the things that we're looking at when, when writing the article, uh, depending on who you talk to, uh, I, I was actually talking to a friend over the weekend who was like, you should post every single day. Frequency really matters. You know, in my experience, quality matters way more than, than frequency. And you could be posting as little as once a month uh, and see pretty amazing results if the quality of the content is, is really that high. Um, and so I my recommendation is always to focus on the, on the quality. You're making sure that the, the people who are writing for you know what they're doing, um, that they are writing compelling, engaging articles, that it's structured in a way that kind of helps keep them on page, that doesn't read like an essay um, or something that's, you know, you're not writing a book. It's a blog. It's a very different format uh, these days than, you know, than a, than a traditional book and, and keep all of those factors in mind. And uh, over time, the strategy works basically every time. Can people find that in uh, in the uh, course that you have or in your group? We do. I mean, I'm, I certainly didn't come on here to promote our course. That right, was, right. Uh, I'm not, just not curious. Easy, but, but, but we do. That's actually the newest course that we have um, because we're so passionate about this and we've been trying to teach as many people about this as possible. So it is actually our, our newest course. And if people listening are interested in just that um, course, we can probably help them get that. If you just email support at ecomcrew.com, we normally don't sell any of our courses individually. It's usually as a part of that premium membership. But if it's something that you really want, we can, you know, help you get just get that one course. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing we're talking about right now, which is, and we're documenting, I was mentioning knitting.com. So we're publicly documenting it, which is going to be a bigger challenge than we thought because we have now a huge subset of knitters on the internet that hate us and want us to fail. And so we're going to have to <laughs> try to do this in, into that headwind, which is, is unfortunate. I mean, it's just, it's an unfortunate circumstance. The dangers of building in public. So here yeah, we are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, there are tools out there. I, I'm big into content. I, I'm, I love creating content. I'm, I'm an old, old, old SEO guy and it's never changed. Content is everything. And yeah. better content, like Neil Patel always says, exactly like you said, if you're not the best blog out there, don't bother publishing. It's a waste. So um, couldn't agree more. Yeah. And uh, anyways, what um, I, I got a question about the title. The title, is that the number one thing that's going to drive traffic when you're writing a blog? I mean, it's important, right? I don't know. Yeah. It's hard to say what the number one anything is. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the title is... Uh, very nuanced, right? You want to have the, so you want to have your keywords in your title. And so mm -hmm. what that ends up being is like, you're writing a title for robots, but if your title wasn't compelling, then people won't click through and that hurts you even more. And so the title is, you know, definitely one of the top three factors. I mean, for sure. Like it, it's, it's hard to say it is the number one thing, but when you look at it from the perspective, I would say the same thing for your Amazon listings. This can either go for Google you go for your Amazon listings, anything where like there's a search engine, the results display very limited number of characters. And that's what you have both on Google and Amazon. And the only way you can, you can sell somebody something on Amazon is to get them to click through and actually make it to your listing. The only way you can succeed on Google is to get someone to click through and actually read your article. And so if your, your title isn't compelling enough to get someone to actually click through, it doesn't matter how many keywords you have in the title. And so right. there's, the nuance of, of both ways. And it's, yeah, it's super important because it's, you know, 70 characters or 150 characters, depending on what platform you're optimizing for. And, you know, Amazon gives you one image and, and that's really about it. And so this is a lesson to be thought about whether it's Amazon or Google, which is to, to really write the title for humans while keeping search engines in mind. Are you using any of the apps out there like Phrase or Jasper or Word, um, Word AI uh, to develop any of your articles or using them to get information? We're not. Yeah, we, we just use AREFs. Um, mm -hmm. We try not to, you know, I, I think, again, because the, the main objective is to write content for humans that really helps answer their questions. And when you start using the tools... It, it starts to force the conversation the other way. You start ending up adding a bunch of extra words or content that maybe a little over optimizes things. And um, we've been in trouble for that as well. Uh, you know, post Panda and Penguin where like things are over optimized and had some penalties with our content. And so we've kind of gone back to this very old school, traditional, like let's not even think about Google and our optimization techniques and let's just write really good content and 
uh, kind of go with the, if you build it, they will come philosophy. Right. Um, you know, and, and so that's the same thing that we've done with Ecom Crew, which has built a very successful high traffic blog. Uh, and we're working on replicating that in, in the e-commerce space now as well. All right. Very good. Okay. So let's talk, go back to the, uh, the, the product launch again, and sorry, I'm, my head's still foggy. No worries. <laughs> it is, it is Monday morning. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Monday morning with a cold. Love it. <laughs> so, uh, let's go back and talk about time and money. Uh, what's required? Like when you're doing a product launch right now on Amazon and I know price and competition and all of that, it, it takes, you know, how long is a piece of string, but Hmm. What are you looking at when you're you, you, you're putting together a product launch? Yeah, I mean, so I think you have to look at the investment you're making into the the blog content itself first, right? Because that that costs money, uh, time and money. And so this is where being a solopreneur maybe helps you out a little bit more. Um, and if you're selling something you're personally passionate about, that that helps more as well because you you probably have knowledge of it, uh, which means that you can do the writing, you, you can create the blog. Um, when you get to be a larger company like we are, uh, we're launching by having, you know, we, we have multiple brands and businesses. And so other people are writing this content for us. And so you can put a, a very large five or even six figure investment into creating one of these assets. I mean, it definitely can run up the tab pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, certainly with, uh, excuse me, the knitting project that we're looking to do, um, that's going to probably be the most expensive content site we've ever created because we've gone out and hired um, some industry experts that that really know their stuff because I mean it's it's a type of industry where you can't fake it, uh, and so you got to have people that really that really know what they're doing and they're passionate about it, um, and so that's a, a large investment. You know, when it comes time to to actually launch the products, the investments basically now you're getting the the fruits of your labor. So there's there really no additional investment at that point other than to to write the emails, and uh, and send people to your your products. And so remember, you know, the, the whole goal for us is to, and it's again, same thing that we do with Ecom crew. The idea is give them value first, give them value first, give them value first. You know, I look at our funnel for Ecom crew. It's like there's 450 podcasts out there. They're all free. There's hundreds of articles, tens of thousands of people a month are hitting our website. It's all free. Then there's many courses, all free. We send out emails every week, multiple times a week with what I think are valuable uh, you know, we we link to other blogs in the industry, things that are that are happening. Try to get people value, uh, and then once a quarter, we have something for them to, to to buy. You know, we sell something to them once a quarter. We try to make the the selling part like just accidental. You know, it's like as as a part of it, which works really well for my personality because I'm not like the 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 sales guy. I would right. suck at a sales job. <laughs> I always feel very uncomfortable trying to sell anybody anything. Uh, it feels very awkward, and so our our approach is almost always that. And so, yeah, three, six months of someone being on our email list and giving them lots of value. Hey, we have these new pair of tactical gloves available, uh, or we have this new coloring book that we're launching or whatever it might be, or we have this new piece of hardware that we're launching, whatever it is. Um, and then you send them off to Amazon and simply just point them that way. Uh, if you have a smaller list and this isn't quite got the traction that you want yet, okay, you can offer them a coupon or some type of a discount to kind of, incentivize them a little bit uh to to purchase which you know obviously uh you're, you're probably willing to do if you're willing to do 100 percent off rebate you're probably willing to offer your your list some discount right um but you don't have to offer them 100 percent discount you can offer them a 10 percent or 20 percent discount um and the the conventional word of wisdom at this point is that if it's 40 percent or higher discount amazon's probably going to discount those sales anyway um and so be careful about offering too much of a discount um, but that's that's really the approach. And so, you know, the goal again is to to grow. It's all math. Two percent of your traffic will get on your email list. It's just like uh, investing in the stock market. Dollar cost averaging every week or every month, you put a little bit of money into it, and your nest egg grows. Well, you get more traffic to your blog. Your nest egg of your email list will grow. And every time you send out an email, you know, twenty thirty percent of those people are opening it. Hopefully, you're providing value. And when it comes time to launch a product, and you send an email. Well, statistically, same thing's going to happen. 20, 30% of those people are going to open it. So many people are going to click through and convert and buy those products. And the thing that's important here is that you don't, as you probably know from back in the rebate days, you don't need a huge number of people to actually buy to make a big difference, right? It's, it's even just getting a couple of people a, a day off your list buying 
unless you're trying to launch into supplements or something hyper competitive, right. which we we don't ever tell people to do. Like we're we're hit singles type of people. Um, we don't really try to develop home run products anymore because the competition is just too strong and there's too much black hat stuff happening there that we just try to stay away. And so when we're launching something in a a less competitive niche, you know, we just don't need a huge a huge list. We don't need a huge number of people to convert. Um, and and what you can do is you can drip those emails out over a period of number of days, as I was mentioning. So if you got ten thousand emails, I might send fifteen uh, hundred people an email uh, off that list on Monday, and then like another fifteen hundred on Tuesday, another fifteen hundred on th- uh, you know on Wednesday to try to get sales on each day over a week long period, and then maybe recycle those people the next week because you know, not everybody opens up every email that you send out, and so you can try again a second, maybe even third time if you really want to push things. Um, but again, some portion of the people on that list will buy. It's completely white hat. The traffic's coming external from Amazon, which they love. Uh, and then I'll, hopefully you've also written a blog post about this as well, where like you get rankings on Google uh, you know, for, for these products as well, which also will send traffic. Um, and it, it works incredibly well. We've been able to launch products in pretty competitive industries um, and, and have have success with this that without without this strategy just wouldn't be possible you know back in the day i'm talking about not that long ago but 2014 2015 i launched a, a product and these were giveaways at the time it wasn't rebates so uh, it was a 90 percent giveaway um uh, 20 imagine this this was sleep aid this is sleep products okay mm. i gave 25 away and I locked in first place for sleep aid, sleep aid formulas, uh, sleep aid supplements, 25 units back in the day. Now try doing it today. You know, it, it, it's completely different story. But uh, yep. but anyways, uh, all right. So let's talk a, a, a bit about the action steps and we'll get into some of these other um, questions. So what do people have to do to, you know, start to build it up? I know you were saying... You know, you, you don't have to do it. It's something that'll come gradually. But what can people do right now to start to build to get those results? Yeah, I think that planning is always step number one. You don't want to okay. just start going in and writing willy nilly. And, and I think also evaluating whether this is a niche that makes sense for you to apply the strategy to. I always caution people, uh, and I hate you know people you know quote quote unquote gurus like like ourselves or something where like there's some blanket strategy that's going to work for everybody for everything. Right. That's pretty disingenuous and, and often not the case. Um, and, and that's definitely not the case here. I think that certain you know, niches are, are better for for content than than others. Uh, I find that like hobbies, for instance, are are the best. You know, what whatever that might be, it could be uh, you know gardening or model railroads or fishing or knitting or you know, other things that like people are very passionate about, like prepping isn't really a hobby, but it can be considered a hobby, um, home improvement, you know, whatever it might be, uh, things that, that start to fall out of that become more difficult to, to write content for. Um, you know, we, we saw a hot and cold therapy packs. So that's not a hobby. We have been relatively successful in writing some articles for, for ice wraps that do rank. Um, but we're competing against like WebMD and things of this nature. And so I, you got to be careful about what you get into uh, with this type of content. And if you're listening to this, you probably already have an existing business. Um, and, you know, so it's, it's, it's really the test is like, is, is this something I want to bolt onto my business? Is it worth it or not? It would be the, the evaluation. If you're listening to this and you don't have a brand yet, I would highly encourage you to get into when you do, or when you're doing your niche, niche selection exercise to, to be thinking about content as a play, um, with the business you're going to create and make sure that you get into something where this works. I think that that's a really strong strategy moving forward is to, you know, if you're just getting started with whatever you're doing to make sure that this is a component that, that can work well uh, with your Amazon business. So once you do that part, you know, the next stage is getting on an arefs.com or SEM rush or Moz and looking through the content opportunities in your niche. And so you can type in a high level keyword like knitting or prepping or survivalism or adult coloring, whatever it might be, and start to just build out lists of keywords that have low competition. And so for me, that means things that have a keyword difficulty, a 10 or less, really low competition uh, and some 
some search volume, even if it's just a couple hundred searches. Again, your initial strategy is to write articles and get and just get some traffic, get some attention from Google, get some rankings so you can start to establish some good signals for your blog. Uh, you know, again, if you're you know looking to get in, in the major league baseball and you're a three year old, I mean, good luck trying to get a tryout over there. You got to you know go play T-ball, like as I mentioned first, and then eventually play uh, Little League or whatever. This is kind of the same strategy you got to do uh, when trying to rank for Google. And so, yeah, you'll put a lot of effort into a ranking for something that only gets a couple hundred searches. And someday uh, your attitude, well, I can't be asked to, to write an article that has that low a search volume because I can spend my time doing something much better. But you got to go do the hard work first. And so same thing happens with like e-com crew now, established blog. We've been doing it for six plus years. We can go after something much more competitive, like how to sell on Amazon uh, rather than like something that's ultra long tail, very low search volume, which is where we started at. And so you come up with that plan, you know, for us, for, for knitting.com, we already have basically our next two to three years of content plan all written out. We know exactly the articles we're going to write in what order. And, um, you know, if we get more manpower to help us with that, we'll just be able to get through the list quicker, but we know exactly the order in which we're going to write the articles that's already been determined. So I think that that's step one, uh, before even getting started. And once you've identified that there is a lot of content that can be written in this niche. It's tough that I think that I can get people to my site, help them answer their questions, build an audience, build build a brand, build you know loyalists, people get them on my list, eventually rank for things that also convert immediately where you don't need to get them on your list first. Cause like you'll eventually rank for best tactical gloves or best fire starter or best coloring books or whatever it might be, which is also a really great search to rank for but that's you know kind of step two, and you want to make sure that you can rank for those things as well. And so it's all about planning, and then it's about executing, which is we talked about writing really great content. You know, uh, Stephen Black came on, and a lot of people you know think about writing content, and they're it's tough. Um, he talks about taking it and doing sub niches of sub niches of sub niches, like get very specific, yeah, and then just kill it there and then start to move up and become just own those sub niches. And uh, anyways, I, I thought that was a, um, like a really great piece of advice that he was giving. I agree. Uh, one of the other things that uh, you were talking about a little bit earlier uh, was the quality of the, the blog articles. And I got to tell you, like we have a, we have a, a, a content driven cigar site. And one of the mistakes we made at the very beginning of this was uh, now we have experts that know cigars, but we went over, we got some, we thought good writers from the mm. Philippines and we got them to do research. I don't think we ever published one of their articles because all of them sucked. And I'm not saying every Philippine writer sucked, but this was very specific on different types of tobacco, different types. And they they were like every they'd come in and I'd read it and go oh god I can't publish that <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know you have to pay and I think that's important if you've got a niche and I don't know the tactical side or the prepper side but I know I couldn't write about that uh, you, maybe you can but you know I would have to go out and find somebody that's into that pay a little bit extra or get that influencer who knows it and and pay them to to do it properly. You know, yeah, I think it's important. We, we actually uh, have several writers in the Philippines, and I know exactly where you're coming from because I think that if you were to hire somebody or pay somebody uh, without doing any training with them, that's exactly what you're going to get. Yeah. Um, you know, we have it. So the, one of the other things that you know, we haven't really gotten into here yet, but we can. It's maybe a good thing to transition to real quickly here. Um, as I mentioned, this can get to be a very big cost center for you. Like you can spend. You're saying that you got to go out and pay for these articles. Um, and, and again, this is all a math game. And so only a fraction of a fraction of people who come visit are going to ultimately end up being buyers. And so you gotta be careful about running your cost up. And so we've had right. to come up with very strategic ways of, of handling this. And for us, that is, uh, getting things written in the Philippines. And so we put a lot of effort into training them, um, before they go off and write about these subjects. And we have them strategically pick articles 
that they can write about. And so even if you look at the cigar niche, and this is something I know nothing about, so I'm going to start saying a bunch of stupid crap right now. So forgive me. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I would imagine that there are things that you you could be less knowledgeable about and still be able to do research and and write about. You know, the things that you got to be ultra knowledgeable about probably should be safe for somebody else to do. Um, and we've had pretty darn good luck with this. I mean, ecom crew, you know, something that you anybody listening to this, you know, if you're selling, if you're an Amazon seller, you got to be pretty in tune with things to be able to write articles to an audience of people that are that are sellers. But you know, half the content on ecomcrew.com is written by someone in the Philippines. Um, and it does well, it gets lots of comments, engagement, it's ranking well. Um, but again, we've put a lot of effort into training them and letting them, uh, you know, we're paying them for their time to go off and learn about this stuff. We have them take our own courses. Uh, and so, yes, you need to, if you're going to try to get that level of content out of someone, regardless if they're in the Philippines or not, I would reclassify it as if you're trying to get that level of content out of somebody who isn't a subject matter expert, regardless of where the world they live in, where, where in the world they live in, that will be difficult to do if you don't train them or help them get there. It's basically impossible to do if you don't help you know, train them and get, get them there. You know, the other the other option is to, to pay somebody probably three to $500 per article uh, that is a subject matter expert to, to write the content. And where that also has an advantage is we do this as well, is they probably also have an audience. And so this also adds credibility to your own blog in terms of like, this is another thing that Google's looking at. And so we will sprinkle these people into uh, our content sites because they you know, will link from their Twitter feed or their Instagram feed or their YouTube channel. Uh, we can put their profile on our site and um, it gives you, you know, Google's looking at like a whole, like they, they intercorrect, inter interconnect every dot, right? They know who's writing for you and if they are, are well known themselves. And so like that credibility that they have also can lend credibility to your, your own site. Um, but I also do believe that you can bankrupt yourself uh, by trying to only pay people at that level to write this type of content because it can get pretty expensive pretty quickly. Right. Yeah. And that 300 to 500 is right in there. That's, that's the spot. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> We've got writers that are writing for us and yeah, that's what they're charging. But we, as you said, like we, we do have writers that, we've been able to train within a specific niche because we can kind of mold them within that niche. So in the Amazon uh, world, and I guess with cigars, cigars is really tough, but anyways, uh, supplements or something like that, as long as you have a training uh, system, it can be done, but yeah. also with the amount of influencers that are out there or um, the people that have really great blogs, um, you know, reaching out to them. And especially uh, right now, there's so many influencers out there. You don't have to go after the biggest influencer. You know, you might want to go after multiple influencers like nano influencers, uh, micro influencers that, you know, reach a smaller amount of people, but still can produce really good content. Yeah, absolutely. It's actually the thing that we haven't gotten into yet because we start, start talking about blog and stuff. But the other big thing that we do off of Amazon is work with these influencers. And you couldn't be more dead on here because if you go after the guy who has a million uh, subscribers to their channel they probably have an agent you got to go through before you can even talk to them right. um it's it's really difficult but you go after someone that has 500 subscribers a thousand subscribers it doesn't mean that they're less knowledgeable or, or less talented than the person who has a million subscribers it means that they just probably started after them or they aren't doing it full time yet or they weren't lucky in some capacity because some of it is luck and being in the right place at the right time and so we work with these people all the time to um, produce content for us, to get our products and review them. Uh, and, and this outside traffic comes from coming from many, many, many different sources. Uh, also, I think helps your Amazon rankings. It's all tied back into launching products on Amazon and getting those rankings up. And so in advance of launching a product, we get our products in the dozens of influencers hands ahead of time have them prep reviews to be ready to launch on the day that we launch our product. It's another really great strategy. Yeah, very good. Yeah, it, it's just growing and growing and growing right now. Mm -hmm. But doing it properly is a whole other ball game, right? So, and like you said, one of the other things uh, about this is engagement and uh, getting out. Same thing with getting um, 
uh, getting to know an influencer or getting to, just to get them to feel like it's not all about you, you know, in, engage before you get married. That's what um, Wilfred Lightheart yeah. always says. I, I, I don't know if you know Wilfred, but he's a really great marketer, social media marketer. Uh, you always have to be engaged before you get married. And, you know, that post uh, or not post. Here I go again. <laughs> but uh, anyways, you've got to give value, 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 maybe a little bit more value and then sneak it in there just like you are doing. And when you're going after influencers, the same thing. It's not me, 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 me. It's about them, the quality, their personality. Start commenting and then you can start recruiting. Yep. But uh, do you know Joe Martin? No, you're throwing all these I, names. I, I wish I knew more names now. Oh, my I'm, gosh. <laughs> so this guy is incredible. He he bypassed everybody. When he has boxy charm. I don't know if you've ever heard. It's a subscription no. box no. Um, with high end uh, beauty products. Well, he sent one. He sent a boxy charm over to these high end um, influencers, like the Kardashians. Those are the okay. ones who picked it up. Okay. He just he does no other marketing. Influencers. He just sold his company to Etsy for five hundred million dollars. Nice. Four years. Four years. And he said, well, I'm going to make it highly high perceived value, high quality. I'm going to make it where they can't say no. Even if I send it to them, they'll want to present it. And uh, yeah. anyways, it blew me away. He was on the podcast and I'm sitting here going, oh, my gosh. And he even though like for me, I'd be really intimidated ever to go to that high level. He just said, "Nah, I just did it. And it, that's kind of cool. And same, same with um, Ruby Mendez with Snow. You know, they they targeted all these big names, and I mean, they sold for a killing as well. I I love the whole uh, the worst they can do is say no mentality because that's really what it comes yeah. down to, right? The worst th the worst thing that can happen is they say no or they don't respond. Like you know, the the best thing that can happen is you end up selling for five hundred million dollars. So I mean, yeah, that's congratulations. Not bad. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, let me see. I think we've got a couple of questions here. Maybe we should target those. Let's do it. All right. All right. Yeah. So we have a couple of questions that are coming in. Um, also, just want to say we still have a bit of time for the uh, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey draw happening. And that is a value of $2,000 today. So that's uh, Mike's Ecom Crew Premium Year mem Membership. If you are interested in entering, that's hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Just write that in the comment sections, and I'll add it to our uh, wheel that we'll be spinning at the end of the episode. All right. Our first question is from Andy. Uh, how much of Amazon competitiveness, if any, do you take into consideration before launching a product? Yeah, I mean, that's all that stuff uh, is still very applicable, right? I mean, the strategies I'm talking about don't uh, give you a pass to just ignore competitiveness and all these other factors on Amazon. Uh, I also feel like um, if you're launching a brand new brand, that similar thing to launching a brand new blog, go after the singles first, the low competitive stuff, the thing that's not going to let you retire. It's going to let you get your business started. There's a lot of things that are important about getting a, an Amazon business started, just getting your, your Amazon account created uh, learning the different types of labels that you have to have, getting inventory sent in, creating your listing, adding your photos to your listing, getting your your brand uh, trademarked and getting in the brand registry, learning PPC, all of these things are just, is, there's a pretty big learning curve to get started with. And so going after the low competition, low, which is also probably going to mean low, I mean low volume of sales product is a great place to start and, and build some confidence there, get some sales, see how the whole system works. And then you can go after like the next hardest thing and then the next hardest thing. And eventually you might have a catalog of 10 things that are producing a couple thousand dollars of sales a month, but that's 20K a month and a quarter million dollars a year. And you're on your way now to maybe going after that next thing that's a little bit harder. Um, and, and I would encourage you to, to, to kind of go up that ladder rather than just immediately trying to hit the super home run, you know, going right for, uh, you know, peptide supplements or something. I mean, it, you know, it, there's much more difficult things to get into and you'll, you'll learn along the way, each step along the way, as you kind of graduate, um, what the difficulties are of that. And at the very top, the, the difficulties are that people are doing a bunch of black hat stuff, not only to get their listings to rank, but they're also probably going to do it uh, anti 
SEO to you by leaving you one star reviews on your behalf or uh, doing a bunch of other really crooked things. And so um, one of the things I love to talk about, my, my dad used to love this uh, cartoon called Far Side. Uh, and there was this one that I remember where the, there's two deer talking to each other. And the one deer has a, a t uh, on his chest uh, a bullseye. And the other deer says to him, uh, that's a heck of a birthmark. <laughs> and so I, I think of that uh, whenever I'm thinking, man, do I really want to get into this super high competitive thing on Amazon? Because that's exactly how it is. You have a bullseye on you and everyone's shooting arrows at you. Uh, and it, it's not really the most fun and comfortable place to be in. But there's lots of things under the radar that you can do. And that would be something that I would take into account uh, as, you're, as you're launching on Amazon. I remember um, I was at one of these events and I got to talk to one of the big black hat guys. So some of the, some of these competitors out in, in China came and uh, they were saying, it's just, you know, it, it's to destroy the competitor. And yeah. he had 4,000 people. He showed us video, 4,000 video. That's how old I am. <laughs> he, showed, he showed us a recording of 4,000 people. Uh, working in his office and all they were were setting up phony accounts sending out one star reviews two star reviews yeah. three star reviews and killing people and he said that's the competition in china it's just to destroy your competitor mm -hmm. i think uh i think i know who you're talking about i had a lunch with him uh in in uh, canada one day because uh, my buddy dave who i do the podcast with is up there and it was pretty disheartening and it was a pretty big aha moment which really solidified this strategy that we're talking about today. Um, and also try, it, it, it's a big warning thing to me to stay away from this part of Amazon, right? Like, again, it's, if you aren't willing to, to do it, you know, if you aren't willing to like hit your mom with the car and then back up over her, like they are, um, probably not the spot that you want to be in. And, right. you know, that's, that just isn't for me. Yep. That's, that's a hundred percent. I always say, you know, it, it's all about karma, <laughs> but these black hat guys are, are out there. They are. They're definitely there. Yeah. All right. Our next question is from Claudia. Uh, we've been thinking about using an insert, asking our customers to enter a monthly drawing for a $100 or $200 Amazon gift card. They would have to give us their email and send us a photo of them using our product uh, to enter the contest. What do you think of this strategy? Yeah, this is kind of a little bit of a moving target right now because Amazon's been updating their TOS about inserts. Um, so if you go about this strategy, one thing you don't want to do is use the word review anywhere. Or you got to be very careful about them perceiving uh, doing anything in exchange for a review because that's incentivized in some way. Um, and so uh, this strategy is probably pushing the envelope a little bit just because you're incentivizing people to give you their email address in a way that's kind of direct comp you know, uh, compensation. It's a drawing of some sort. Um, I, I always, I, I always use this as a way to try to uh, it quickly articulate this thought, uh, which is if it worked in 1990, you know, before the internet and brick and mortar, uh, in terms of inserts, it's probably going to be allowed by Amazon. And so, you know, in 1990, when we would go, you know, actually get in our car and drive down to the mall or, and, and go buy something, uh, lots of things had inserts in them, right? You would have instruction manual inserts. You might have a warranty registration card insert. Those things are going to be okay. You start pushing the envelope of, I mean, you know exactly why it is that you want to do this, right? It's, it's to get people on your email list to try to take customers off Amazon and, and, and do something with them. Um, you know, it's, the same thing back in the rebate conversation, you know, I, the, I'm really good friends with one of the guys that, that ran a large rebate platform. I mean, we've known each other for years and, and the thing was always, oh, rebates have been happening for, for, you know, since the beginning of time, like Amazon's going to always be okay with this because it's rebates and this is very typical, but we all knew the reason we were doing it was to goose our traffic and, and, and send it, you know, and, and try to manipulate rankings. Right. And so I, I would, just be very careful with your insert strategy to make sure that it's genuinely, you know, for a good purpose and not just to, to do something that Amazon could perceive as, as being against terms of service. And, you know, I think again, register for a warranty. I mean, that seems pretty, pretty okay. But like when you start paying people to, 
you know, for a monthly giveaway with an Amazon gift card. I don't know. It, it's probably pushing it. Probably okay. Probably pushing it. But again, just be very careful not to say that that picture that they leave or something a part of that sequence like pushes them to leave a review. Uh, you can't also you can't ever have any and or language in there. So it's like right. if you had a great experience, leave us a five star review. If you didn't, we'd like to make it right. Please contact us. You, you, again, all that stuff is off off limits now. Um, so just be very careful um, and and just don't and make sure you don't try to combine both concepts uh, with your insert. They they are banning people now. They are shutting people's accounts down. I've seen it happening over and over again. Um, and so just be very very careful. Yeah, I, I heard that. I don't know how true this is, but I heard that they had uh, hired ten thousand people last year to buy uh, Amazon products from Walmart or other outlets and see the inserts inside. And if they were the same, not a big problem, unless it had the re review thing in it. Mm -hmm. uh, but if Amazon's insert was different than Walmart's or Chewy's insert, then you got a big problem. Yep. Just be very careful. Not, not the reason you want to, I mean, uh, it's an important component of being a successful seller on Amazon is having a good insert. We work very di you know, diligently on, on our inserts. Um, but, we haven't had a scramble either to like redo all of our inserts be because of these new rules. We were always again, erring on the side of caution. Um, there was a time years and years ago um, where both our email correspondence and our inserts would say exactly that. If you had a great experience, please leave us a five star review. If you didn't, we're a small business. We'd love to help you. We'll make it right. The thing that's really frustrating about this is that's exactly how I do feel, right? It's like, if you had a great experience, please leave it. If you didn't, I would like to make your bad experience actually a five-star outcome. Like that's just gen genuinely how I am as a person, but Amazon doesn't want you to, to, to do that, which is unfortunate. And so you got to play by their rules. You know, if you're, we can complain about Amazon all we want, but we've all elected to go sell there. And if you don't like their rules, then go do something else. Right. Okay. Kel's next question. Okay. Um, let me see. So from Dr. Cause, I'm going to shout him out. Uh, he said he's been listening for four years. You got me to take content seriously, Jack. I've uh, been killing it since. Uh, big hug, my man. Thanks. Most solid e-com strategy. And he, uh, Dr. Cause wants to know, uh, for Shopify, uh, what are your top three apps you love these days? But this is so funny to me that I always get called Jack. Uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, usually it's it's like Jack Ass or something like that. <laughs> uh, but my, my name is Mike, and the last name's Jackness, and somehow like that always gets translated into in the Jack, which this happens over and over again. It just always makes me laugh. Um, top three apps for Shopify. Uh, I love Stamp.io. Um, it, it's just it it's the best review platform out there. Reviews are really important. Uh, Clavio. I would consider to be a Shopify app because it's a it's a direct integration, um, and uh, one click upsell from Ezra Firestone. Uh, a little biased there; he's a good friend of mine, and um, I love what he's doing with with Zipify apps. But you know, getting more revenue. You know, the thing about Clavio and and Zipify one click upsell; those are both get more revenue out of the people that are already there, which is a really important component that a lot of people forget about. Uh, and so when someone's already giving you money and they've already completed the checkout, having an upsell offer to get more product into that box, you're going to pay for shipping to get to them anyway, uh, is a really great way to add money to your bottom line. Uh, even if you have to offer them a deep discount um, to, to do it, uh, again, you're not paying shipping again, you're not paying a lot of extra labor to get more stuff into the box. And so keeping that in mind uh, is incredibly important. Do you know what the cost of uh, one clip click upsell is? I don't off the top of my head. Uh, it's been years since we've installed it and, and even really looked at it. Uh, I believe they have like two different levels of, of plan now. Um, uh, you know, I just, I honestly don't know. I wish I yeah, knew the no answer problem. to that, but I, I don't. All right. Very good. All right, Kels. Okay. Um, I know we are getting pretty late into this podcast. Um, so yeah, maybe we we'll take one or two more and that'll be it. One or two more. Uh, okay. So this is actually for Marsha. Um, she has a connection for the knitting. Um, so Marsha is asking or is saying, uh, I'd like to connect with you. I have a 40 plus year, year old friend who is a knitting expert and has designed the products for Hobby Lobby for years. I'm sure she could bring value to your knitting.com and your project reach out to me and I'll connect you to Kelsey has my contact info. So cool. Mike, if, you, if you're if you interested, uh, I, I'm happy to connect you with Marsha. Yeah, please. She's Love to. A great number. 
Thank okay. you. Um, next one is from Claudia. Uh, you refer, you refer to coupon stocks often, Norm. What exactly is a coupon stock? I know this is a basic question, but I just don't know. Yeah, no problem. So the coupon, you know how there's digital coupons where you see the little green or orange tag right under the price? That's an instant coupon. The coupon stack is the one if you scroll down and you you add them, uh, you go in the back, you add them, and, and there's all sorts of different coupon stacks that you can have. But let's say it's buy two and get 15% off entire catalog or whatever. Um, but usually there's three, usually around three. There used to be more but they started to penalize it from what I hear. But three or four would be like three, five, 10, 15, and you'd have a code, you use the code in the checkout, and then you'd get a certain percentage off. Um, the problem with coupon stacks is a lot of sellers would just give too much of a coupon and or a percentage off, and they ended up losing money or getting close to just breaking even. So here's the trick. Um, I don't usually give more than 10% off no matter what. And if I've got, like, if, if people buy two, I'll give them like two points. If I get, if they do five, I'll give them three points. It is very slow. And uh, I, I, like, I've seen 25% off, I've seen 30% off. It's just going to wreck your sales. And, but one of the nice things about coupon stacks, coupon stacks, uh, and you can do this, I believe it's under promo promotions in the navigation bar. So you can go and you can check it all out. But a lot of people forget to add them. So they go and they buy five products. And you end up getting the five sales at full price because they forget to add the coupon, the code, which is really kind of cool. All right. So that answers all the questions. Or oh, um, this one is a little big. I'm not sure if we'd have time, but uh, from Andy, what are your next ROI strategies? Your blog, other blogs, influencers, affiliates, advertising? Um, any main points? It's hard to know what's next because that's in the future. So, <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that I would answer this in this way: that you always need to be innovating, right? Whoever's there early uh, is typically the winner. I think about you know Facebook ads in the early days for e-commerce. We were there in 2016 when it seemed super easy. Uh, ManyChat was another you know one of those things for a while. Right now, there's kind of like we're in in this state of flux, and the wagons are circling. And I don't know that we really quite know what the next thing's going to be yet, but there will be something. Um, and so you know you just got to not be complacent and and get used to what you're doing because the only thing constant is change. And and the world of online marketing. Uh, it happens like in dog years. So like, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's like every seven or every year is like seven years go by it, it, like things are happening so fast and you got to be constantly willing to, to adapt. Um, and uh, you, know, unfortunately, you know, I know lots of businesses right now that are kind of with, we all been playing musical chairs our whole lives, whether you realize it or not as an entrepreneur and a lot of people's chairs have been taken away from them because they were making their living through a Facebook ads and they're going to have to to innovate again. Um, and so that's just something you got to kind of accept as an entrepreneur, especially in in the, the digital marketing world. Yeah, a hundred percent. You always have to adapt. You have to be resilient. You know, you want to be an entrepreneur, you got to be resilient. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so before we get to the wheel of Kelsey, Kelsey, can you hit um, the sponsor button, please? Meet Sellerize, our favorite suite of tools for Amazon sellers. Leverage nineteen innovative tools to dominate your competition on Amazon. Get your customer reviews, rank higher, track and analyze profit in real time. Sellerize is what you need to make data-driven decisions and give your business a boost. Get a free month trial by signing up with a coupon, Beard Nation. Follow the link in this episode's description and get started now. Okay, now let's get over well, before we do that, Mike, how do people get a hold of you or Ecom Crew if they want to take advantage of uh, your courses or your uh, mastermind? Yeah, sure. So E C O M C R E W everywhere. Ecomcrew.com, Ecom Crew on iTunes, Ecom Crew on all the social media stuff. If you want to reach out and and get a hold of me, support at ecomcrew.com is the best email staff over there. I'll make sure I get it. Um, but yeah, I'd love to, to hear from your, you guys and hopefully you found this valuable and go check out the podcast. Like I said, we have tons of free stuff out there. So if you're just getting started, especially, and don't have the budget yet for a $2,000 mastermind, we totally get it. 
um, genuinely, it's kind of that value first pr- approach. Go check it all out if you find value in it. Um, and then we also have a full money back guarantee because I never want to take money from someone who wasn't happy. I mean, my, my proudest accomplishment with Ecom Crew over the last several years is that more than 50% of our people renew because it is a subscription annually. And so I always joke about how it's easy to scam somebody into giving you $2,000 once, but if you can get them to do it a second time, you're doing something right. So right. That's, uh, I think we're doing something right. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. So uh, yeah, I can't wait to have you back on because there's so many yeah. different things that we could talk about. Anytime, man. Well, you haven't seen the Wheel of Kelsey yet. <laughs> I have not seen the Wheel of Kelsey. All right. Yeah. Stand back. <laughs> it's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. All right. All right. It's the wheel of Kelsey. So uh, if you are the winner of today's giveaway, please email me K at lunch with and I will connect you uh, with your prize. So you didn't, you didn't want me to lower my uh, headphone volume before hitting. <laughs> 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 All right. Claudia. Oh, Claudia. Yeah. All right. Oh. Congratulations. Perfect. Well, welcome to Ecom crew premium Claudia. We'd love to to chat with you and congrats on uh, on the win and we'll see you in our next uh, series of webinars yeah another canadian so, excellent we yeah, have lots yeah. of canadian members okay so that's it for today mike man it was really good talking to you and, and you just took it over all i had to do was sit here while i was coughing i don't know how many times i muted but uh <laughs> I don't, I don't know if you noticed. But I, I I, uh, we oh we did just for, for the audience knows that I'm not just a, a attention horror. You, you did mention that your throat was hurting. And I was like, I can talk extra today just to kind of help you with your, your voice. As I also do a podcast and know how difficult it can be when you're, you're trying to talk and all you want to do is cough. Well, you did it. And thank you. <laughs> not a problem. All right. We will have you back. It, it was excellent. So thanks again, Mike. Thanks, Norm. Appreciate it, my friend. All right. See you later. All right, everybody. So I hope you liked today's episode. You know, uh, it's something that we're not talking enough about. I hope you uh, learned a bit. I hope you can apply it. Uh, Content is near and dear to my heart. I I believe in it. I mean, I went out and bought a company for content, you know, just because I saw results with content. So anyways, if you have any questions, please, you know, make sure you reach out in the group or you can reach out to Mike. Um, but it's so important. And also these other things we talked about, there is life beyond um, rebates. All right. And geez, I think it's Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday. Um, Wilfred's going to be back. Wilfred Lightheart. So it's going to be perfect because because what uh, Mike was talking about Wilfred is going to be just confirming about this value, value, value. Um, he, he's he got a, a bunch of things he's going to be talking about. And um, anyways, I think it's going to be great. When Wilfred comes on, it's always a, a really great kick your feet up and listen, have a laugh. He's a great guy. So we will be talking to him on Wednesday. Uh, Kelsey, anything else? No, I think you you pretty much covered it all. Um, if you're interested in joining our Facebook group, that's Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA, and e-commerce collective. Um, that's where you can ask any follow-up questions about the show. Um, or if you just have any questions or tips for fellow Amazon sellers or e-commerce sellers, um, feel free to share there. Um, we're all about community. And um, yeah, so don't forget to give us those thumbs up and share this out to anyone if you found this useful. And just a reminder, we do do these giveaways every single episode too. So tune in on Wednesday and we're going to have a special giveaway then as well. And not I too shabby you... today, $2,000 giveaway. So yeah, not bad yeah, That was nice. <laughs> um, the other thing, I don't you know, normally talk about it. Kelsey usually says something about it, but if you are looking at more, not podcast material, but more training more actionable items. The Patreon group is there. Um, very inexpensive. Uh, we we meet a few times a month. Um, there's giveaways there as well, but it's the content. We bring on a guest. Kelsey has another call with uh, social media. I have, I meet one or two times a month with, uh, with the group and uh, it's our Patreon. So if you feel like supporting the podcast a little bit, check it out. Uh, you can go to the website, hit membership, and there's uh, different price points there that you can join. And that's it. 
That's it. Anything else, Mr. Kelsey? No, I think we're good for today. All right. I made it. Woo. <laughs> I made it. Okay. So all I have to do is get through these last two lines and I can go back to bed. All right. <laughs> so thanks again. And join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of the community. We could not do this without you. And enjoy the rest of the year day. We'll see you on Wednesday. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch.